I'd like to call to order the regular City Council meeting of September the 3rd. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call. Mayor Racy. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Porter. Sir, you're going to have to sit down for right now. Yes. Here. Councilman Miller. Present. Councilman Webster. Here. Councilman Dowd. Here. Councilwoman Skiff. Here. Councilwoman Wagner. Here. Quorum is present. Item number one, approval of agenda. Move to approve without exception. Support. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two, city council minutes. 2A, regular meeting of August 20th, 2019. Move to approve. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, I missed the second on that. Item three is request. 3A is request from local 1620 to participate in the annual fill the boot drive for Muscular Dystrophy Association on September 9th, 2019 at 10 a.m. on the corner of Wayne Road and Michigan Avenue. Move to approve. Support. Okay, any questions? Could I have Captain uh, uh, Stager and Lieutenant Reeves come on up and tell us a little bit about this? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having us up. Uh, for 65 years, the MDA and the firefighters have teamed up uh, to raise money to help support the MDA. Uh, they've raised over $44 million nationally last year, uh, 2019. Uh, last year was our first year doing it, fill the boot here in Wayne, and uh, we contributed a small part to that, but we had awesome community support with people donating money. They recognize mm -hmm. the firefighters and fill the boot. We'd like to continue to do that this year. Um, going to be Monday, uh, starting at 10 a.m. We'll be out there for the day. Um, of course, we'll be there off duty. These guys just volunteering their time to come and do the boot. Uh, the the money that we raise is going to go to the Detroit office, and the uh, Detroit office supports over 2,800 families in the area. Uh, nine of those families are right here in the city of Wayne. So when we're collecting money and we're donating, it's for people in our community, which what we love to do is give back to our community. So um, <clears throat> the the money that they raise does a couple of things. Uh, main thing it does is help the, the families with uh, uh, kids with uh, MDA, support the family by providing wheelchairs, Hoyer lifts, stuff like that, uh, transportation to doctor's appointments, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the main things it also does is it allows kids to go to a camp for a year. Um, every summer they have an MDA camp, which is probably the best week of these kids' life because they get to go to camp, do things, and uh, enjoy life that they wouldn't normally be able to do. So this money uh, that we're raising by filling the boot is going to go to the MDA and then help support ultimately families in our community. That's great. <coughs> Any other comments? Council? Mayor Racy, through the chair, could you please uh, let the community know uh, what dates and times that you will be out there collecting and if there's any other ways that we can contribute other than meeting you on the street? Percent. Okay, so on uh, September 9th beginning at 10 a.m., and you'll see us throughout today, uh, Michigan Avenue and Wayne Roads. Uh, we'll be collecting uh, fill the boot. If anybody misses us and wants to make a donation, they can always bring it up to the fire station, and we will put in the boot from there. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Very anybody good. else? Okay, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4 is business, licenses, and permits. 4A, approval of a 2019-2020 materials recovery facility license at Brooms Auto Parts, 4322 Walker Street. Move to approve. Support. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item 4B, approval of a 2019-2020 materials recovery facility license at Annapolis Auto Parts, 36597 Annapolis Road. Move to approve. Support. 
Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number five, communications and reports. 5A is public meeting invitation from Unistrut International Corporation on September 19th, 2019, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Hype Recreation Center. Do we need a motion for that or is it just a communication? Just a communication. And then I have 5B is letters of appreciation from Beaumont Hospital in Trenton in regard to excellent pre-hospital care from from firefighter paramedic Jared Endicott and firefighter paramedic Joseph Krogel. Okay. Uh, could you read that, that one for us? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this uh, run date was on April 6th, 2019. Um, it says, thank you for supporting this patient, transporting this patient to Beaumont Hospital, Wayne on April 6, 2019. As you may recall, this was a 73-year-old female that suffered a fall. Upon arrival, she was medically stabilized and a full evaluation was initiated. It was discovered that the patient suffered a subdural hematoma and that the patient would be transferred to Beaumont Trenton for further care. BMMS transferred the patient from Beaumont Wayne to Beaumont Trenton later that day. Your pre-hospital care was excellent. The patient was stabilized and transported per protocol in a timely and efficient manner. We did not identify any injuries that your personnel could have identified in the field. Your patient was admitted to the hospital for further care until her discharge home. Please do not hesitate to call with any questions or concerns. So. You, you want to read the other one too? Mm -hmm. The second one is, um, thank you for transporting this patient to Beaumont Hospital on May 21st, 2019. As you may recall, recall this was a 51-year-old male that was involved in an assault. Upon arrival, he was medically stabilized and a full, pa a full patient evaluation was completed. Injuries identified were a concussion with a traumatic subdural hem hemorrhage without loss of consciousness, a fracture of the nasal bones, fracture of other skull and facial bones on the right side and contusion of the right eyelid and periocular area. Your pre-hospital care was excellent. The patient was stabilized and transported her protocol in a timely and efficient manner. We did not identify any injuries that your personnel could have identified in the field. It was decided to transfer care to the trauma team at Beaumont Trenton. On arrival at Trenton, the patient was evaluated and admitted to the ICU where he left against medical advice. Uh, Captain Steger, could you please uh, let uh, the firefighters Krogel and Indicott know that we appreciate all, all their hard work in these two things? Thank you. And I've actually been hearing a lot of positive things <coughs> about the fire department. I've had a number of residents said that they've had, they've had, to, had un, unfortunate circumstances and, and they've been able to uh, reach out to our fire department. It's been a great experience. So thank you for all of, all you guys are doing right now. Go ahead and move the agenda. Item number six, boards and commissions. 6A, approval of the appointments of Dolores Robb of Phyllis Street, Robert Schmitzer of Sims Street, and Eric Clariman, Winifred Street, to the Commission on Aging until August 2022. Move, Move to, to approve. Lord. Any questions? Who was the support? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6B was the added item. Um, this was approval of the appointment of Nancy Greiser of Chestnut Street to the Commission on Aging until August 2022. Move to approve. Support. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 7 is general items. 7A is to approve approve a calling of a study session to discuss ballot initiatives and council procedures and rules um, for Tuesday, October 1st, 2019 at 630. 
Move to approve. Support. Any questions? Um, I'd like to put uh, two committees together uh, for just bef to get information beforehand uh, so that we have some, to make sure we have things to talk about. Um, I, I wrote, put together two, uh, two different things and uh, I'd like to have all you guys participate in it, but I've broken you into two different groups. Um, to deal with the procedures um, part of this, I'd like to put uh, Councilman Dowd, Councilman Wagner, and Councilman Webster. And on the ballot initiatives, I'd like to put uh, Councilman Miller, Councilman Skiff, or Councilwoman Skiff, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Porter on, on that. And then you guys could talk amongst yourselves to figure out when to, to get together. But I'd like to have some bullet points so that uh, we have some idea so we can have the direction for the meeting. Is that fine with everybody? I'm in, I'm in agreement. Okay. Anything else? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 7B is uh, approval of proposed contract with Stantec Engineering to provide professional engineering services related to the HVAC control systems upgrade at the police Wayne Police Station in the amount of $22,500. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any uh, questions? Or actually, can I have uh, the chief come on up and <clears throat> tell us a little bit about this? Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, as everyone knows, we received a grant for $100,000 uh, this spring to update the uh, Police Department's heating and cooling system. Um, when we moved into the Police Department in 2003, we've had nothing but problems there. Um, the design of the system was very poor. We spend, you know, at least $10,000 a year on repairs, um, thousands and thousands of dollars per month on the heating and cooling bills. Um, so when we found out we got the grant, um, we started exploring different options. The problem is there's so many problems with the system. We can't just simply say replace an air conditioner or replace a heat, you know, heating unit. It's just, it's extremely complicated. There's all these controllers in the ceiling that move the hot water around. Um, so we explore lots of different options. Um, we talked to a few different engineering companies. Um, many people didn't get back to us. The one engineering company that we talked to was actually the uh, engineering company that designed the system originally. Um, and it was very poorly designed, so quite frankly, I didn't return that phone call. Um, we had some regular heating and cooling contractors come out. Um, they either didn't want to touch the project or they told us to contact an engineering company. Um, the uh, proposal I have in front of you, um, although it is a significant portion of our $100,000 budget, um, there are so many problems with the system. We need an engineering company on site while the contractor is working. Um, otherwise, the contractor that we hire is going to say, oh, you need to fix all these things and our budget will be gone. Um, as an example, those controllers I mentioned, there's 77 of them. Simply replacing all of those would use up our whole budget. So we need an engineer out there who knows what they're doing who says, no, you don't need to replace everything. You know, you could do this workaround and that workaround. It's the only way we're going to be able to stay in budget. Um, just further on the amount of the project, I talked to Mike Byton from the Building Engineering Department. He said a project of this nature, you could expect to spend 20 to 30 percent of your budget on engineering. He gave an example of some projects he handled where it was 20 to 30 uh, percent of the uh, project for the engineering. Okay. Any council questions? I have a, Mayor Chair. I think, I, this is a comment, I think this is a good approach of taking it. I know we've been going, you've been going back and forth on this and uh, getting an evaluation of an oversight of, of identifying the general needs of repairing or to get it on track with the heating and cooling system in that building, I think this is the right approach to go. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 7C is approval of purchase of a stump cutter for Department of Public Works in the amount of $53,392 to be paid for out of general fund. This item was tabled from the meeting on August 20th, so we'll need a motion to remove it. Motion to remove from table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
So then now we need approval for this item? Yes, now you can open discussion on this. You need a motion to move to approve. We have support for this? Support. Okay. Can I have Mr. Queen um, come on up and tell us a little bit more about your findings? Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, just let me first start off with, um, I wanted to just give you a brief summary of how many, I, I already did that a little bit last time, but of the actual trees that are out there, we actually have 80 plus um, stumps that are out there right now currently. Um, one of the questions that was kind of asked, I think, by one of the residents as well was the size of some of the stumps that um, we're having to do. Um, so I have a list of a lot of, uh, a portion of those 30 about 38 of them that we actually have sizes for because they were ones that the contractor that we had hired to do some of the work to get some of the um, serious trees taken down that were uh, an issue uh, for liability um, taken care of for us um, so that was the only part of their task that they were supposed to really do was that part of their contract was to take those trees down um, they did that for us uh, with uh, excellence. They did a great job as far as taking down all these trees. Um, when we go about putting out the contract for these trees, when they're measured, the trees are measured about three to four feet from the ground around the diameter of the tree at that point. And then that lets us know uh, that they base their price on that. We don't just say measured down at the very base of the tree itself. So with some of these trees on here, they range anywhere from 18 inches in diameter of the stalk itself to 55 inches in diameter, some of the trees. And I actually went out tonight prior to the meeting because I wanted to make sure of the information I'm giving you that of these trees, um, I went by some of the larger ones, but then I also went by some of the smaller ones just to give you a variations. So an 18 inch diameter tree, for instance, the stump at the base is actually 48 inches in diameter because it, it takes up a lot of the lawn, the root system, and everything else. So it's actually a lot larger than people realize what you, what you don't see. You see maybe just the stump part in the lawn. Uh, of the 55 inch diameter one that I went and measured, you're talking that's an 84 inch diameter stump that's actually there that needs to be removed. Um, there was another one on Chamberlain at uh, address 4444. It was a 46 inch diameter tree and the base on that tree was eight foot to 10 foot large. That's how big this stump is. In this. So it's not like these, these are just small and they range anywhere in between. I had a house on Gloria, um, it's a corner house. They actually have three trees that were removed on their property, uh, 24 inches in diameter, 34 inches in diameter, and 44 inches in diameter. The stumps go from 66 inches to 60 inches to 72 inches in diameter on this one individual's property. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things I want you to take into consideration for tonight's, uh, you know, relook at uh, purchasing this stump grinder, um, and so and and also to take into consideration the 80 plus homeowners that are the ones that actually have the stumps on their property, not so much the ones that might be uh, have a little concern about the stump grinding being per, uh, the stump grinder being purchased. Uh, you know, that's to me it's just a small uh, handful of individuals that might have a, something to say about that. It's the 80 plus people that I'd be concerned with that have them on their property. With that being said, some of the things that you asked me to look into, oh, they let, one of the other th I, points I wanna make as well, is we um, still have 33 tree removals that need to come down as well on top of this already. So um, some of the questions you asked last time, um, to rent a piece, the piece of equipment we would need from the uh, supplier that I talked to that we wanted to purchase from, their rental fee is actually $5,500 a month. It's not the $2,000 that you might rent from Home Depot. I mean, those are smaller for residential use and, and not commercial like we do. Um, so that rental is, like I said, $5,500 monthly. Um, you asked me to look into financing this piece of equipment, the $53,000. So you can do anywhere from a two, two year to three, four or five year um, financing. The two year you would pay an additional $2,000 in interest with a monthly payment of 2305.50, ranging in between all the way up to the five year, which would be uh, about 1021.82 a month, 
for an additional $8,000 in interest that you'd be paying for this stump grinder. Um, one of the other things that was asked was the warranty on the piece of equipment. There's a one year on the machine itself, two years on the engine, and a three year on the cutter drive shaft of the piece of equipment that we're looking into. Um, one of the other things that was asked, I had mentioned before, I believe, was about contracting out. Um, well, some of these, some of the stuff that you're asking me to contract out, this is actually union work, okay? We have contracted out some of it just to kind of get caught up because of uh, some of the liability that's actually involved with the larger trees that people call in. We put them on a list, and now that, that they're on the list, we need to make sure that we're taking them down. Um, but any for those... Um, so for the contract that we had with CutMyTreeDown.com, we had asked all the um, uh, vendors at the time to supply us with um, prices for stump grinding. And so we do have one with them, but it's not part of their contract. It was just an additional add-on that said if we wanted to extend their contract after they removed the 50 trees uh, or so that we had with them, that they, we could go ahead and get them to do the stumps. So we've had them, they've done some of them for us, but you're talking about an average of about $200 per stump, and that's about the average between the smallest to the largest sizes of the stumps. Uh, so you're talking $200 uh, per stump uh, times 80, that's about $16,000 right there alone that you would spend if we were to have the contractor to try to complete this whole task. Um, so those are the findings I have for you um, that uh, to think about and, uh, you know, see which way you wanted to go my recommendation would still be to purchase the stump grinder outright at fifty three thousand dollars and uh, so we can, can you know, we would have about by the time we get the machine in this year we'd have a, probably about a month and a half to uh, start chewing away at that 80 that list of 80 that's there mr queen uh, i had a you didn't mention but i think it's important this is diesel not gas correct that is correct so that's why it's a little bit more expensive, but the salesman also let me know that right now they've their line of stump grinders that the commercial uh, tree uh, individuals use, uh, they've most of them have switched to diesel right now. He said they may come back to a gasoline version again. Um, the kind that we're using, he said it's used by most municipal um, entities as well as colleges because it's he called it uh, curbside service where we're doing the right of way between the curb and the sidewalk. We're not like a contractor where they would use a uh, different piece. They have uh, different pieces of equipment that are on tractors that they actually will drive into somebody's backyard and, and access their backyard that way to do that. But that's an additional like um, almost uh, 10, 10 to $15,000 more for that piece because now you have to buy a trailer that you put this piece of equipment up on and trailer it around as opposed to the pull behind hitch type that we're looking at because that's what we use in most municipalities <clears throat> and colleges like he said uses so okay. uh, any questions from the council mayor pro tem so uh, mr queen the depth into the ground that the one you wish to purchase mm -hmm. compared to a rental or well contractor would probably have approximately the same equipment but as far as a rental, I know Home Depot was thrown around, and I looked at the machines. The closest one I could find was South Carolina. Mm -hmm. But what's the depth? And I know depth going down to dig out the roots and, and shear those roots is important. Is there, a, is there a difference in what we could rent and, you know, in the depth that this machine would go? There is. Uh, the, the rental, now, now the rental would be the same from this right suppliers yes. the same size and everything that we'd be using because the ones like from home depot uh the one i looked up that was about the two thousand dollar that you had was discussed mm -hmm. has an about 11 inch cutting wheel on it only this big the one we're purchasing has a 28 inch mm -hmm. cutting wheel on it that cutting wheel is needed to you know, have you seen some of the stumps around they're raised up out of the ground so you're having to first take off two feet of that stump all the way around in somebody's lawn. You see their lawn do one of these, it has a big berm, a hill in it. Well, we have to take that whole hill down to make the lawn basically their front berm level with the rest. We don't just cut out the stump and leave this big hill on their lawn. We chop out everything. So we end up going maybe a foot or so into the lawn after we've ground the stump down as well to get down even further and get more of the stump out of there. So another foot okay. down in there. Uh, 
another question through the chair. Uh, I was I was given the answer by several people. Just let the stump stand and rot. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us some info on why we would not wish to do that, such as bugs, termites, insects, sure, sprouting all, trees? Right, all of the above. I mean, if it was your own home, would you want the stump in front of it? I mean, there are people that the one gentleman I talked to, I mean, he used it as, you know, it was, he's selling his home and and it's, you know, here you have all these stumps on your lawn. Um, so he had used it at that point saying that that was an issue for him and he wanted the work completed. So from an aesthetic, you know, viewpoint, for me, I wouldn't want that on my front lawn. I would want the, the work to be completed and my lawn to be restored back to what it was. And that's what, and that's what part of the, um, what is completed when we do stumps is the restoration part of it. We put topsoil down and grass seed and then, the homeowners required that water that to make sure and it will grow you know okay one last question <clears throat> I too did a little tour mm -hmm. uh, some of the stumps look rather old could you give us what would be the in your thought what would be the oldest stump that we have that we haven't gotten ground down yet or that we have out up? there well that's Let's see. Just a guess. You don't have to give me an yeah, exact I, I, I don't know right off. I mean, the ones they just cut down a, a year and a half ago were as part of those 38, but of those, of that, uh, what was that, 42 more homes, they may have been uh, chopped down. The trees cut down a while ago. So I'm not, I don't have an exact uh, okay. date as far as the rest. Okay, of thank you. But they've been out there for a couple of years. Though. Anybody else on council? Yeah, just one thing. Um. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Queen, I don't object to anything you're saying. Um, I know we need this piece of equipment. Um, my uh, my objection comes strictly from the finances. We're projecting a uh, we're projecting to be over budget, and this is going to add to that over budget for our, our whole city. Um, I, in my opinion, we're, we're looking at the lesser of two evils. Do we leave 130 stumps around the city, or do we stay out of debt? In my opinion. I mean, it puts us more in danger to be in debt by buying this piece of equipment right now. I still maintain that we should wait till next fiscal year to put it in the budget and buy it then. And I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but I think it's the lesser of two evils to leave uh, 130 stumps around town. Any other, anybody else? Through the chair. Mayor. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Queen, on average per year, how many trees do you think that we cut down roughly? Uh, I don't have that number available right tonight. It's ballpark. Uh, well, let's see. We just cut down 10. I think it was about 10 within the last week and a half. So there's 10 that we just got rid of the other day uh, that were part of that list. So let's say that we don't purchase this and we waited till next year. Uh, roughly how many trees or stumps do you think we would, we would have sitting around that would need to be? You'd probably have twice as many. Because we're gonna, this uh, this isn't only this isn't something that's just gonna go away. Your, your trees and the cutting and the the stumps, uh, you know, a storm could come through in the next week or month or whatever, and take out even more trees. And then we'd be out there cutting down more trees and you know removing and and then have those stumps out there. So it's it's an ongoing thing that uh, it's not it's not something that's going away. That says okay, we're gonna get caught up eventually, and then all of a sudden there's not gonna be anything to do. Mayor hey, Racy, through the chair. Councilmember. A few things here. What if we did go ahead and rent out for one month a year? In that month's time, approximately, how many stumps would you be able to uh, take care of? Uh, just be guessing. And there, it, it, it depends on the size of the stump. Okay. The, the larger one I just talked to you about, that's about 8 to 10 feet. That might take you a day. A uh, couple of days actually to grind that stump down, clean up the because you have to grind it and it's so large that the debris gets so packed underneath it that you have to have, you know bring a piece another piece of equipment out, scrape out all the you know the sawdust and all the chips, haul them away, come back with the grinder, grind it again, do it again, and it fills up you know the it, around the machine um, gets filled up. So you might have to do that several times for that large one. So it may take two to three days maybe to do just that one large one. The smaller ones. 
they go a little bit quicker. You might get a, a few done in a day, you know, maybe five, might, you know, depending. And that's just grinding. Now we got to go back. We got to put the topsoil down, grass seed, scrape out all, clean up all the debris that you've left behind. So it's a couple of day event for uh, for any amount of trees that we may or stumps we may be grinding. You know what I'm suggesting is that you you take care of phase one. You rent it out. You go out there and you identify a group of trees that we're going to take down in that month, okay, and take care of it. Uh, and then you know on the other months when you return the equipment and then finish off the project of uh, what you intended to do. My issue is, is that, what about the legacy cost of this, owning it? When it breaks down, we're gonna be, re we're gonna be liable for it. Uh, are these machines uh, easy to operate? Is there training uh, involved for the employee in operating this equipment? Um, I, uh, I, 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 I've been listening to a lot of feedback from residents on this, and I, I'm gonna share one one, one comment that was made, and it really resonates with me, and I think with a lot of us. A stump grinder provides zero value when not being used, which will be 95% of the time. Time of service should be subcontracted sub when needed. If we were in the business of stump grinding or profit, I could understand the, needing, the need for this tool. How would you respond to that? the need is great it's not just a this isn't like an exact science where you say let's rent it for a month and we're just strictly going to do stumps we do uh, various you know already that we do various other uh, tasks around the community whether it's road grading whether it's getting ready for snow removal you know it's not you know it's not meant to be a money maker that's not what that's meant for it's to actually take down when we take down the trees and to do the cleanup so um, you know, with that part being said, it's that's it's the needed piece of equipment. I mean, we're it's not like I said, it's not something that's going away. It's not something where we can just do it, uh, rent it for a month, and then say let's just focus on stumps this month, because something always comes up in our. You know, we have guys that take off. All of a sudden, you have to do. You're working on other tasks, whether it's cleaning the sewer system, things that are mandated by the state. We had just the other day, we had. Um, a two-day event with water main breaks that came up that you most of you are probably aware of well we had six water main breaks in one you know two-day uh, period that says well we shut down the operations for anything else and focus on our water main breaks that's the priority over this is just extra work that still needs to be taken care of I mean you got Atwood Park over there that has multiple trees in the park that need to come down that need to be taken down so it's an ongoing thing that is it's not something that you just look at and say well the individual that might be talking about that do they have a stump in front of their house you know probably not so they look at it and say well you know it's of no value to me but to the neighbor it might be the value that says i need this removed i don't want to disseminate how much this community appreciates what the dpw does for this community um and you mentioned priorities i don't think stump grinding is you know as being understaffed as we are and issues that rise that call far and above uh, stump grinding, do we actually have the, uh, the labor force to be able to um, use this machine, use this equipment to get those things? It's, it's, that's, that's another thing that makes me uh, wonder to take this uh, huge investment on something of this matter. I mean, this is something that is going to be spread out for years. There's, there's going to be sometimes we will need it more, then we will need it less or at all. And that's where I, I'm leaning more towards uh, renting it out or subcontracting out as opposed to owning it. Well, it's not ongoing. Up that it's funds. ongoing, though. And that's what I'm saying. Anytime it's periodic, they, isn't it? Periodic? Pardon? Periodic. I mean, we don't periodic? do this uh, 12 months out of the year. Not 12 months out of the year, but it's usually a great portion of the year because that's part of the roads, foreman's responsibilities, tree trimming, tree removals, stump grinding. He does the road grading. He does uh, storm sewer maintenance, catch basin. So there are so he has to split his time and say, okay, well, how, how often am I going to get out there and actually take down these trees that might be a liability? So he goes out, takes down the trees. Well, we before we're right on top of it. You t we took down trees, you stump ground right behind it, and then everything's cleaned up within a couple of weeks. But now that this, we've taken on so much with our stump old stump grinder being broken down, that's where we've gotten behind on these stumps. Now all of a sudden they're uh, we're making a list. But otherwise, when he, we got caught up on this list here, 
usually he's right on top. He takes five trees down, he's going back out, and he's calling them in, and then we're stump grinding right behind the trees that he just took down. So everything's getting cleaned up within a couple of week period. So how did we get, I'm sorry, how did we get backed up on this? The piece of machinery is broken. Okay, how long has it been broken for? Mm, for quite a while now, six months or more. Okay. You know, so, we've been looking uh, we into... know 80 trees didn't come down in six months. Well, you had 50 trees come down from our cutmytreedown.com mm -hmm. with the 30 that we already, you know, some of the ones that we had out there, and he's constantly cutting, <coughs> still cutting trees down. Like I said, just took down 10 the other day, you know, within a two-day period. That is all. Thank you. Mayor, if I just yep. point of clarification, I, I do remember when you went through the, the city and X'd out all the trees that had to come down because they're... Uh, I know my city, my street had several, and I think uh, we have a couple of the record breakers as far as uh, size-wise stumps. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, the, as department, you make a conscious effort to go through, assess which ones have to come down before they come down, right. or if they're impeding with lines uh, and whatnot. When's the next time we have to do that? Next year, first quarter, second quarter? Go through. Uh, uh, for the trees that, we, again, which ones have to come down? Um, usually what we, we get uh, calls from the residents a lot of times they'll have us come out we'll inspect the tree okay and then we'll make a determination from there because sometimes it's just a matter of they might not like the tree in front of their house but we don't just cut it down it either has to be dead dying diseased or dangerous right and we make that determination on our own that says okay let's get up in the tree our guy will get up there and inspect it sometimes they're hollowed out and he goes holy cow this thing's hollowed out we need to take it down you know because if in a storm it's going to come down Okay. So he'll make that determination, but it'll go on a list, and usually he has that list. And um, uh, as far as what which ones are more serious than others that need to come down right away. Right. So, but we go out and inspect because whether it's they they might want it just trimmed, trimmed this that or you know taken down. So we'll look at it. If it's just a trimming it needs, we put it on a list as well and trim okay. it. And do we have a list right now of trees that? Mm -hmm. Our risk and how many do you know what number that is at this yeah point? we have uh currently right now i think we have like i mentioned 33 trees 33 that need to come down come down regardless right so that puts us at 100 and correct change without really looking at atwood seriously at this point mm -hmm. i know atwood has a lot of trees it does a lot of dead ones too may I raise you through the chair you just raised a question hold on one second i'm sorry you, you, did you, you hit something I just want to make sure everybody had a chance to talk first. You sure? He raised a question here. Um, we cut the trees down, and then we go ahead and grind them, grind the stump mm -hmm. separately, and two different. Uh, we do not uh, contract out any of the tree cutting services in our community. Oh, we've contracted out. I mentioned. Okay. With cutmytreedown.com. So they've cut down 50 of those serious ones that we weren't able to get to the larger ones. Yes. So they removed them, and but it, part of the contract was not for them to stump grind them because we were going to do that on our own when the machine was working. So we've been with the contract with Cut My Tree Down now for about uh, just over a year. And what additional cost would it be to also uh, contract that um, stump grinding out as well? If they're cutting the tree down, they're there. What's the additional cost? Two hundred dollars a tree, basically. On the average, two hundred dollars. Okay. Right, and we've already had them do some for us because of this particular issue with our stump grinder being down. So they've done about eleven or so for us right now. But again, contractors are just like anyone else. They don't always have the manpower either to keep up with every community that might need their services. Okay, I just talked to a county, a guy that works for the county for the forestry division. They have the same issue where they cannot keep up with the trimming and contractors, even though you can put a bid out for contractors, you may get some contractors, but then again, they're, they can't keep up with that workload either because all the contract, a lot of them are spread very thin because they're all either uh, being tapped for the state, the county, or the cities to do a lot of tree work. So you, we you know, do a lot of it ourselves. Uh, you know, I do know when I needed something done like that, I usually look at for the off seasons where they're looking for work. And usually that's in the, the colder months or the beginning of the year, you know, uh, and they do give you a better rate on it because their business does slow down because of the seasons that we have. I mean, have they looked into that option as well? And also, um, I'm going to listen 
leave it at that. Council. Thank you. Um, well, Councilman Miller, if you don't mind me just uh, responding to that a little bit. Um, in the wintertime, you can't grind stumps because the ground is frozen. So they, even though they do cut down trees, um, you wouldn't be able to grind any stumps in the wintertime because the ground is frozen. And I only know this because I actually used to work for a tree company. So yes, it's true. So um, anyway, I was just going to say that um, I would be in favor of the two-year option if people, are, if the council is uncomfortable with buying it straight out. Um, I do believe that this is something, though, that, it, that we need. Um, it's it, like I said, it's an ongoing thing. It's something even if we like the, take care of the ones that we did that we have now and are projected to need done. That's sixteen thousand dollars, and that's just for that's not even including the stuff that we're going to need in the future. And at some point, we're just going to be probably spending more money contracting out than it would be if we just purchased one, either on a lease option or straight out. So um, I would be in favor of the two-year option if council would also as well find that if that sets better with them as well. Mayor Reese. Mr. Queen, what was the two-year option again? Two-year option was um, 2300 a month with uh, $2,000 additional in interest. Mayor Reese. Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, one other question. Uh, the one that we do have, how long have we had it? And how, how much money have we spent in repairing it? 20 years. I don't know how much we've spent. 20 repairing. years? We've had it for 20 years. It's been at that good service. Mm -hmm. And it's been repaired, like I said, uh, two, a couple of times already. It's been repaired by our mechanic. and then uh, Sounds pretty indestructible. Right. And so that's why I mean. It's a good piece of equipment. We've had it that long. And that's why you're going to take on some repairs at some point. Uh, with the you know the much as much use as it was getting, um, so that's not going to say that. Yes, we have warranties for this piece, and we'll make sure that we use those warranties if something were to go wrong in those first few years. But um, have we looked at auction equip uh, auction with this kind of equipment? No, because I don't know what you would be getting when you get a piece of equipment that's already used. Somebody else has used piece of equipment. You know, um, you sounds don't know what's indestructible. Yeah, but you don't know what you're getting, what's been rebuilt. We're on. only getting one year service warranty on this new one, and we're paying. One year no. on the machine, two year yeah. on the engine, and three years on the cutter drive shaft with the. Okay. Mm. Uh, Wagner. Yeah, Mayor. Um, I could be in favor of the uh, two year financing at $2,300 a month. Uh, $2,000 interest um, isn't that big of a deal to me to finance over two years and to give us the peace of mind that we're not um, adding $53,000 to our deficit this fiscal year. Um, I had a couple comments. Um, I I don't I don't remember what council member asked this question, but the question was asked whether we could borrow this from a neighboring community. I called the neighboring community. They said no. Um, <laughs> they, they said they help us out with things, but no, that's not. I mean, and I I didn't think that was. Yeah, I wouldn't was recommend good, that anyway. No, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that that everybody understood that that's not an option, mm -hmm. and when we if we were to get one, we wouldn't want to be loaning it out either. Correct. And uh, but they also said that they use it every day, mm -hmm. um, because as the workflow changes, you can go out and hook somebody up to that, and if if you have a break, you can get something done and maybe get one done today, two out today. It just depends on the day and, and what's Correct. going on. And your manpower as well, because you can always send somebody out to go do that. If you don't have enough manpower, right. And then the other, it was has been mentioned about hiring that out. I would, I would be very surprised if we didn't have a grievance filed um, against the city, because I can't see the unions not wanting to do the stump grinding part of it. I can understand not wanting to do the tree part because it's higher and they're willing to work with us on that part. That's a real, that's not an easy task. But uh, and that's that saying stump grinding is either. But I can see that. If I was, we could wind up paying for it twice if they file a grievance against us, correct? Correct. Okay. One other comment. Okay. Mayor Pro One other comment. Um, I find it sort of mind boggling that we would even consider paying $5,500 a month to rent a machine that's capable of doing the job. 
that's one tenth of the purchase price that that, that the uh, DPW is asking for. Uh, I agree that it it's going to hurt our budget, uh, but to put it off a year or two years, who knows what's going to happen down the road? What emergencies are we going to have next year or before next year? We have a lot of months to go. Uh, this isn't something that's going to just completely bankrupt us right at the moment. I mean, it's a piece of equipment that Mr. Queen has mentioned and the mayor has mentioned. This is something that if they're doing a job, they're grinding a stump and they have a water main break and the manpower is needed, they take it back and drop it off. But if we rent, we, we will need the people to stay on that machine for $5,500 a month. We can't afford to worry about other breakdowns. That'll be an emergency, spending that kind of money. That's all. Okay. And I just wanted to add, I, ha I too have had uh, numerous residents that have mentioned that have stumps in their yards that they're, they're very displeased with that. And it's been probably a couple of years of complaints that, that that's been going on for a while. And um, it's, I can understand what, what their, their, um, the situation for them. So any other council questions? Just, just one, I, if I may. Yep. I, I know this is the most eminent piece of equipment that's not working. And I'm sure you've got a list of equipment that you also would like to be replaced. Uh, that's probably being band-aided and put together. And, and going is this the worst piece of equipment we have at the moment right We're now coming to you for a tree truck soon okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> well a lot a lot like I explained before a lot of our equipment is uh, 15 to 20 years in some of our back hose yeah um, we used to have a five-year exchange program and we actually had a, an equipment fund <coughs> used it but because of the state of the city we had to you know that money's had to be used elsewhere at the time but um, we did have that to change a lot of our equipment it was a five-year plan for most of our dump trucks and a lot of those things that get get beat up on a day-to-day -day, uh, depend on how much our workload is you know water main breaks and everything else so. okay any other council questions thank you miss Burgess my name's Martha Burgess did I hear correctly that he said a lot of these stumps are on private property? No. Yes. No, they're on city property. No, you said no. private property. You said private property when you were talking. That's not what you said. No, they're on city property. But I was wondering, the, the corner house that has three large ones on their property, he, said, he stated? Yeah. He did state that. Yes, he did. Three. But we shouldn't be liable for anything on private property. It's it's on the it's on the city. There property. aren't any of the trees. They're not on private property. They're all in the right of way between the curb and the sidewalk. The one on Gloria Street is at forty four twelve Gloria, and they're all in the right of way, which is city property, and we're responsible for those trees. Mr. Blackwell. Good evening, Mayor lady and gentlemen of the council um, is this if it's approved is this piece of equipment coming out of the DPW budget or the general fund general fund okay uh, the problem I have as a taxpayer as a stakeholder in this community it wasn't too long ago and I'm not faulting anybody I'm not here to start an argument but you eliminated the senior program and the research that I've done if I'm correct after grants, it only cost the city between thirteen and eighteen thousand dollars. Is that correct? So with this money, we could have kept the senior program up and running for a couple of years. And I'm not begrudging any city department for any equipment that they need, because I want the people, employees, to have their the equipment they need and to do their jobs safely. Because I know they have families that they want to get home to. Problem I have is this coming out of the general fund and if memory serves me right um, the contract that we have with hype hype athletics is responsible for Atwood Park and the 10 trees that mr. Queen mentioned I believe are uh, they fell in um, the park over here so that's 
that's the uh, you know I want to bring that to your attention. Like I said, I don't have a problem with any department getting the equipment that they need, but when you eliminate it, one of the most viable services to our seniors. And there's a problem because, like I said, you could have kept that program up and running for a couple years for less than the uh, almost $54,000. Thank you. Mr. Osborne. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Last time I spoke to you about the trees, um, I informed you that I had a contractor at my place, and like I said, uh, he did a great job and cleaned it up, looked very well. Well, uh, just after that Tuesday uh, meeting here, uh, lo and behold, the city DBW was there making banging noises, and they happened to have their backhoe out there, and now they decided to pick up those big logs that they just threw in the ditch. It's coincidental. Maybe sometimes you have to mention things to get things done. Uh, maybe some of you have mentioned it. I, I disagree with this $53,000. Uh, mentioned that these are, Mr. Queens mentioned that we are, the reason we're doing this is because we are Tree City USA. That's what he said last time. Now, it's back and forth. Whose trees are they? You wouldn't want that in front of your uh, driveway, etc. And uh, no, these are city trees, okay? And these city trees, they did such a good job that uh, I know you're always looking for liability. But they just finished a tree of which they left the stump and walked on, and they took a limb out. But they were very observant that they left two dead limbs above it just hanging there. So if anybody walks on that public sidewalk, it's all leave free. We got the paperwork. Okay? They just ran down the ran down the roadway. It's not like old times where they used to knock on your door, put a hanger on there and say, Hi, we're in the neighborhood. Can we help you? No, not that type of service anymore. I know we're low on staff, but fifty three thousand dollars in a one man crunch is out of it. If I can get it as a consumer at less than $400, and we asked him last time, well, what's the guarantee? I think Mr. Councilman Dowd said, what's the guarantee? He says, I don't know. I'll have to call my salesman. See, the word salesman, my salesman. No, that's my salesman, too. Because your contract, now why don't you put this out for bids and ask, request for bids for this job to be done that is so vital and important. I think Mr. Porter, Mayor Pro Tem hit it right on the ground. We have mandates of water, mandates of water supply that take precedent over a tree. So you gotta take that crew right off. I totally agree right away with that. So I would like to see the city uniformly do like they're supposed to do, put it in the newspaper, open for bids, exactly what you want. How many trees do you want? I don't see no red X's or yellow X's like they used to. And at $53,000, I can stand looking at a, a stump another year. I think that's all we got to do is go out and buy a can of spray, a green paint, and spray over it and wait a year and let it rot. Because I'm not spending $53,000 of my general fund money. Let it come out of his money of operations and you'll see what it feels like. Like I told you last time, you're eating too much steak. Good evening. Um, can we get a grant for this fifty-three thousand dollars? No. Why? They're not available for this type of a thing. We've been looking. Can we get, um, like this gentleman over here, get bids out? I know of five companies that want to do business in the 
city of Wayne take down trees, stumps, the whole nine yards. We can do that, but we'll pay for it twice because we're going to have a union grievance against us and we're going to have to pay the union for doing it. This is a union. Well, the union can do their own thing. If you've got this many trees, you obviously don't have enough people. No, we don't. Ha we're not providing them with the equipment to be able to do their job is the issue. Okay. So we have, that's the problem. But we're, they're going to sit there and they're going to file a grievance against us and we're going to pay for it twice if, if we do I mean, job. Obviously, things. we should be bidding out the DPW then and get a, a, a contractor in here that's going to take care of all the trees, all the stumps, nothing personal against the DPW. I've been laid off many times. It's just that we need to subcontract things out around this city because we can't afford it. That's all I'm saying. We've got to come up with something better. 53000 is not it. Thank you, Mayor and Council, Sharon Bunning. I wasn't going to speak. I respect, I just lost my glasses. I won't be speaking now. Yeah, okay. Um, this union business is new, and this is a new argument, and you've mentioned it twice. If this would have been presented differently, I think you'd have a lot more support out of the community. You would have my support. You would have my support if I understood that we were going to engage in uh, uh, union problems under the DPW. I think I'm a union woman. I really believe that I am, and I've always supported that. So now I understand it, that we, can't, we should not go around them. That forces us to purchase this very expensive piece of equipment. And if we need it, we need it. My problem was I went with Philip Wagner. I think it's too early in our budget year to, to go into our general fund for that large amount of money, especially when we just had the agenda item before our poor police chief talking about his $100,000. And, and is he really going to make it for heating and cooling at his building? And then is he going to come back here too and go, hey, you know, I'm about $60,000 short to pull this off. It's just so early in our budget year. Um, the only question I was going to ask about trees, but I'm just saying, if we would have had a better understanding about that this was an employee, a union, DPW issue along with the equipment and who gets the job, I get it. We can't contract this out. That work belongs to them. I support that 100%. My next last question in on all these trees, because they and stumps, um, <clears throat> we've had remarkable people all summer, some of you, take, uh, fixing up our parks and taking down a lot more trees. So I think you create a lot more stumps. Are those in your account? Do you have those from the parks? Where I, I just see the pictures online every weekend. That's not tree that's, the, that's not even counted. OK, well, OK. That's my, that's my comment. All right. OK, thank you. Anybody else? Wish a council. I mean, do, do we want to just vote on this and then yes, then go to the next one if, if it doesn't pass? So we can yeah. So do you want to do a roll call vote then? Yes. So, okay. So we're <laughs> we'll do the original motion, and if it doesn't pass, then we'll. So the original yeah. to approve the item for purchase of fifty-three thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars. So roll call vote. Mayor Pro Tem Porter. Uh, no. Councilman Miller? No. Councilman Webster? Yes. Councilwoman Skiff? No. Councilman Wagner? No. Councilman Dowd? No. Mayor Racy? Yes. We have five no's and two yeses, so that motion fails. Anybody else want to make another motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we go with the two-year option. Support. Who was the support there? Do you want to go ahead and do a roll call for that? Okay, so the motion is to purchase the stump grinder in the amount of $53,392 under the two-year lease agreement. Um, uh, not a lease, right? It's a purchase. Pur purchase. Purchase. Oh, I'm sorry. Purchase agreement, not lease. I misspoke. So purchase agreement, um, 
$2,300 a month was the two-year option. Mayor Pro Tem Porter? Yes. Councilman Miller? No. Councilman Webster? Yes. Councilwoman Skeff? Yes. Councilman Wagner? Yes. Councilman Dowd? Yes. Mayor Racy? Yes. So we have six yeses and one no. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Council. You're welcome. Okay, item 7D is approval of a tentative collective bargaining agreement between the City of Wayne and general employees. Move to approve. Support. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight, administration reports. <clears throat> Thank you, through the chair. Ed, I really thought we were gonna have to go with beavers, but uh, glad you got your uh, stump grinder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Um, so thank you. I, I'm glad we have an option to definitely move forward. Um, so there's a few things tonight, actually, before I get to the questions. Um, first, I'm going to have Mr. Mills come up and give the sesquicentennial minute. Good evening. Uh, tonight's topic is the Haroon Motor Car Company. In 1911, Ray Haroon won the first Indianapolis 500 in his bright yellow number 32 Marmon Wasp race car. He traveled to an, at an average speed of 74 miles per hour and was one of the first drivers to use a rear view mirror in a race. After 1911, Haroon retired from racing to pursue a dream of building his own car. Haroon bought the buildings of the former Prouty and Glass Carriage Factory in Wayne in 1916. Shortly after, he built a 148,000 square foot addition to the complex and began producing cars in 1917. There were three models offered by the Haroon Motor Car Company, a roadster, a sedan, and a touring car, each retailed for $595 and was powered by the company's own four-cylinder engine. Production reached 200 cars a day by 1917, but production was curtailed by World War One. In 1918, the company received a government contract for the production of 155 millimeter howitzer artillery shell casings and were limited to producing only 25 cars per day. After the war, the company tried to rev up sales and get back into the car production, but ultimately it failed to recover. A total of about 3,000 Haroon cars were produced from 1917 to 1920. The factory was sold to Godfredson Truck Company in 1923. Ray Haroon went on to work in the automotive engineering field where he promoted the adoption of seat belts and bumpers on cars. And just for a point of information, with respect to the 1918 Haroon motor car that was in the Southby's Auburn, Indiana auction over last weekend, I regret to inform you that the Wayne Historical Museum was not the successful bidder. The winning bid totaled $30,000, which was twice the estimated value going into the auction and about five times what we were able to dedicate toward this project. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to have the city clerk has uh, an update this evening she'd like to share. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm going to be hosting a meet and greet. Um, and I would like to invite our most valued election workers. Um, I'm going to have this on Wednesday, um, September 18th, here at City Hall and Council Chambers from 6 to 7.30 p.m. It gives me a chance to meet all of our election workers have them meet me, get to know each other before I, we jump into 2020 with the elections that are coming. I'd also like to extend that invitation to anyone who may be interested in joining our election worker team and becoming an election inspector. 
um, it's a good chance for you to get involved in the election process, uh, meet new people, and earn a little extra money. Um, the only requirement in that is that you are a registered voter in the state of Michigan. Um, I'll have applications available at that meet and greet, or um, if you can't make it, just stop by the clerk's office and I'll have them available there on the, on the counter. Um, I look forward to meeting everybody and um, bring a friend if you come to the meet and greet. Again, that's going to be Wednesday, September 18th um, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. here at Council Chambers. Thank you. Uh, before we get into the questions from the last meeting, um, I, I felt bad I couldn't make it this weekend, but I want to thank the Parks and Trails Committee and the dozen or so volunteers that were out this weekend to clean Schaefer Park. You guys did a great job. You removed a lot of branches, so it was uh, very much appreciated, all the work you do, so thank you. Um, if anybody hasn't noticed, the DPW is working on the pedestrian and bike crosswalk over on 2nd Street. So if you see some construction, some barrels, and some uh, torn up areas, they are, finally, they're, they are finally able to get to that and schedule that uh, as part of their work. So they've been working on that as well. That was something that was requested by, this, um, by the uh, citizens of the community. At the last meeting, let's, we'll go into uh, questions. I'm going to have uh, the city attorney answer the question that was asked about the policy on attendance at council meetings. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the question, I think, had to do with whether absences need to be excused or not excused or whether a motion needs to be taken on those. Um, the currently promulgated procedures and rules of city council do not address that issue. Uh, as it, it, it addresses the issue with respect to um, an excused or unexcused vote as far as attendance goes. That's something that's not mentioned currently in the rules of city council. Uh, as I indicated, there is a that section that deals with um, yeah, there's a compulsory attendance and also uh, whether or not a vote is excused, that's in the charter. But as far as having a vote on whether some a council member's attendance is excused or unexcused, that's not unnecessary. It, it's certainly a courtesy, but it's nothing that's required by either the charter or the rules. But it might be something you might want to consider when you revisit this in October and you look to amend your rules. Thanks, Mike. All right, the first question was, uh, another question we had was, what is the city doing about abandoned buildings? The council, as some may recall, passed an amendment, amended ordinance, chapter 1473, sections 1473.01 to 1473.15 earlier this year. Changes made to the ordinance included changes to procedures and fees related to vacant properties. The intent of this ordinance is to stimulate movement of properties that have been vacant for long periods of time. Uh, the B Buildings and Engineering and Ordinance Department is going to be, um, will send out the vacant property bills in February. And the reason that we waited till February is because that is the time when the property owners um, do usually receive that notification. So we waited so that we didn't have to do two mailings and spend the same amount of money to do the exact same mailing. So we will do that in February. And uh, Mayor Pro Temporer, obviously you are very passionate about this item and you were very helpful in, in getting this, this approved. So did you have anything to add to that? No. Okay, sir, thank you. Question two, this one's been answered a few times, but I'm always happy to answer the question, what's going on with the building south of City Hall, which is the former WABC building. Uh, the owner has done a lot of work inside and continues to work on the building with the intent for it to still become a brewery. He received a state grant for some upgrades to the building and they are working on obtaining their liquor license. Uh, the building needed a lot of work and changes and I'm really glad that actually they are taking the time because breweries do take a lot of time to, to, uh, to build, especially in an old building like that. Um, but the rumor that it is a dead business is absolutely not true, uh, which, is, which is great. So I'm glad you asked that question, Judy. Thank you. Um, and then, of course, next door, I don't know if anybody uh, saw the post, but Jake's Way has sold too. So that is uh, going to be a restaurant bar as well. The owner is uh, planning to spend quite a bit of money inside and outside. Um, I think the thing with the WABC, there's, you haven't seen what's going on, on the inside. The outside still looks the same. He's done some landscape, but the landscaping is going to be the very last thing that the building owner does. So that's probably why um, you know, people think that there's not anything going on. But there is definitely a lot going on in that building right now. So that's uh, great news. I'm glad it, I don't mind answering that question every time. Um, there was a question. I'm going to have Ed come up and answer. There was a, um, a question about the Sim Street crosswalk. Again, 
Uh, the, the Sim Street crosswalk was asked about um, for putting markings down. Um, we went out there and took a look at it, and we didn't see any markings that had originally been there ourselves. And so we don't want to encourage putting a crosswalk in when we don't feel it would be safe for people to cross there, even though there's ramps on either side of the street. It's also where the MDOT Road meets the city road. And so it's more kind of, we think, in their, in their area of the MDOT Road. But at the same time, you got that split going on to where people are coming off of Michigan Avenue West there at 40 miles an hour, trying to get down to 25 miles an hour. We had a similar um, situation with uh, St. Joe's down at 4th Street in Sims where they wanted a crosswalk put in. And I think we did some uh, research, uh, maybe the police chief and uh, Mike Biden and myself. Um, and you don't always want to just put a crosswalk in unless there's proper signage as well or flashing lights and so we researched that one as well and decided that wasn't a good fit either because the traffic um, doesn't slow down coming off of Michigan Avenue um, they try to get them down to 25 but they don't do that so um, we don't recommend it it's not in part of our line marking um, line marking that we had a contractor do just recently throughout the city it wasn't part of that makeup of that map that we used to put crosswalks in we didn't have that one on that map as being part of the ones to have a crosswalk put there. So we're not looking to put one in there at this time. Um, we don't feel it would be a safe uh, idea to put one there. All right. All right. There's no questions. This is your report. Uh, there was a, also a question about, a couple of questions about uh, stop signs at Haroon and Fourth and questions about street signs and no parking signs on Glenwood. And the chief and I talked about this. This is not something that, uh, that we take up at council or answer at council because a lot of these require studies. They require the police department to go out and take a look. So I would encourage anybody who has questions about stop signs, traffic related questions, anything, to contact the Wayne Police Department at 734-721-1414. Or if you happen to be at the council meeting, please, uh, you can bring it up to the chief or a, an officer who is also in the room as well. But this does take uh, quite a bit of looking into. It can't be answered uh, overnight, correct, chief? Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to add one more thing really quick. So I would have loved to have gotten a, a grant for the stump grinder. Um, in fact, one of the things I've been working on is the Michigan Municipal Risk Management Agency is the city's insurance carrier, as you know. And they have something called a RAP grant, and it's equipment grants for communities that are members that, uh, of which we are, that uh, they usually provide about 50% reimbursement up to certain amounts. It just depends on what the piece of equipment is. It's usually a lot of smaller pieces of equipment. Police Department and, and DPW, others have, re have been able to get grants from, that, um, from those opportunities. The only problem is, is that the MMRMA has not updated their grant list in a very long time. Um, and so what I did is I had asked the uh, department heads to bring up anything that they think should be added to the MMRMA list, simply because of the fact that if it mitigates risk, uh, I think a stump grinder can mitigate risk because when you don't grind the stump down, when you don't get rid of that, and there's, you know, there's roots underneath, there's things that can happen. I don't really have a lot of background in the root area. But that can lift sidewalks up. That can create tripping hazards. That can create a lot of different problems. And so I don't see why there's any argument about not making a stump grinder part of this grant process moving forward. That's not going to happen. I've been working on this. It's going to take them some time. They issue about three grants per year. Um, and so the next one's due in early October. However, I did talk to several board members and the MMRMA myself, and we did provide a list of about three pages of information that we think the MMRMA should actually reconsider uh, with regards to updating their list and, and providing more opportunities for communities. Unfortunately, a stump grinder, we, we did rack our brains about that. That's just not something that, that we there are grants out there for. And um, grants are getting much harder to come by if they don't have a, a, an impact. Say it's like a, a, a equipment, like we've got grants for the ambulance, or we've gotten grants for a police car, or for the HVAC system that the chief was talking about. You know, things that save money, things that, you know, capital needs. I can also say that we've done a great job on saving money to the general fund because we've been able to get these pieces of equipment as much as we can through the grant process. Unfortunately, 
in DPW, it's nearly impossible to get grants uh, for equipment like that because it, they really like public safety. They like things like that. But it doesn't mean that we're going to give up. So I think even if the MMR may have con had considered this and we'd gotten 50% back, that would have been really nice, right? But unfortunately, Ed needs the piece of equipment now. I don't know when the MMRMA is going to change this, but I am pushing very hard. So we are constantly looking for money opportunities. Um, that is it for the evening. That will conclude my report. Thank, Thank you. you. Public comments for matters not on the agenda. Pursuant to the Michigan Open Meetings Act and the enacted procedures and rules of City Council, now is the time for public comment. Any questions will not be answered this evening, but the appropriate person will make their best effort to respond by the next council meeting or as soon as possible. Provided you state or leave your name, leave your contact information with the city clerk. Approach the podium and state your name. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Mr. Blackwell. Racy. Um, at the conclusion of the last council meeting, um, with the um, pursuant to the advice from Chief Strong, I did contact Lieutenant Carter at the Wayne Police Department on Thursday, August 22nd, regarding the stop signs at Haroon and Fourth. And Lieutenant Carter, I left a message. He did contact me. Um, as far as I know, right now it's still in the process because he's going to come out do the study and everything. So I threw the chair to the police chief. I just want to say, please, I did um, uh, express my gratitude to Lieutenant Carter for taking the time to, you know, take my call and everything. If you could just tell him I, I appreciate that, and the neighbors do too. Um, second thing, uh, with the street lighting assessment, and I don't mean to beat a, uh, a lying dog, um, to my understanding, an assessment I say this. You said, uh, Mayor, that the assessment was used to pay the electric bill at DTE, correct? Okay. I take that as a affirmative. Um, to my understanding from the research I have done through state law, and you can defer this to the attorney if you so wish and um, come back at the next council meeting, uh, but pursuant to state law, from what I've read, and by no means I'm not planning to play, you know, be Matt Locke or, you know, a city attorney. Um, an assessment can only be used for improvements, not to pay an electric bill. Um, with that, I have to say thank you. Okay. Thank you. Jump in the back. Gentlemen, ladies, Brian McCoggern. Uh, understand that the homeowners paid fifty thousand dollars for an investigation. Whatever came of that? Okay. Is that going to be next time? Yeah. But yeah. It, <laughs> sure. It's been through. Anybody else? Mr. Shelton. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Stan Shelton, uh, Wayne Chamber of Commerce. Uh, some of the events that uh, the, the Wayne Chamber of Commerce is on the move. We put on a uh, successful golf outing on the 24th of last month. We had over 60 some golfers. Uh, we participated with two other organizations. And, uh, and I'm glad to say that there were no fights. Maybe a couple of jabs here and there, but uh, no fights. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, we also had a, a very nice Wake Up Wednesday. Um, thank you for coming, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll have another Wake Up Wednesday on the 11th, September. And uh, we, we're going to have it. We're going to host the, the, the Helium Studio is going to host it on uh, the 11th at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. So we're looking for your support. Uh, also, on the 12th, we have our first luncheon, business luncheon, uh, at uh, Hype Studio and uh, Hype, uh, Hype Athletics. Center. And 
Mr. Mayor is going to be our guest speaker. So we're looking for everybody's support right, at that time. Uh, also, there is a, we're still looking for um, board members in the chamber. So if you know of anyone, and there's a letter, a letter going to come out pretty soon. If you know of anyone who would like to serve on the board of directors of the Wayne Chamber of Commerce, please let us know. Thank you. Mr. Osborne. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, <laughs> Council, maybe you could address this next meeting before we have it. Uh, this communication from Unistrut, uh, they mention that they uh, have notified you and have been working in consultation with you in regards to the, the TCE chemicals running from their building, of which they've been working with the DEQ and Eagle State Agency for conformance. I wondered if you might have that uh, document available for citizens to read. Uh, it pronounces that uh, this is for people that want to come to this meeting for if you just live within a hundred feet. Uh, Miss Pride two meetings ago brought this uh, same item up because she was persistent in following this up. Now it the letter states and it was addressed to you the city uh, that they have been working in consultation with you and those two regulatory agencies of the state of Michigan, DEQ and now known as EGLE. So I'd like to know if that document of that communication between you uh, uh, and Unistrut could be shared and be made available for uh, review prior to uh, citizens going to this meeting at the Hype Center should they wish to. I think it's very important. Uh, under, under the present code, it just says 100 feet. And I would stipulate that the width of a, a roadway is at least uh, 25, 30 feet wide, Chief? A roadway like Southbound Wayne Road? give or take, so at least three car lengths. So we take eight car lengths, at least 24 feet. So we have people who are not notified, but it's over on the other side. And I think it's a very important thing because uh, it's just like uh, where he lives. Uh, Chief lives over there, what we now call the Buck property. And uh, when we get into the redefining of the brown tree of why it's uh, dirty property. That's because they had chemicals and changed other, they didn't remove the soil. And that's why we call it for a buck. We got it for a buck. So, but I'm really concerned about this TCE and the communication between that and the city. And it, it'd be available through the clerk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? John Mills, uh, Chestnut Street. On behalf of the Wayne Historical Society, I'd like to invite everyone uh, to our next meeting, which is uh, Thursday, September 12th, next week Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, we have uh, Councilman Andrew Much from Novi and his wife Wendy. They own, live in, and have renovated their Sears catalog home, and they will be presenting on that. Uh, the Historical Society has individually invited the 15 Sears and Montgomery Ward catalog home owners that we're aware of in Wayne uh, to the meeting. Um, I know when I went around and took pictures of those homes, uh, the three homeowners I spoke to, uh, they have the catalog, they have the ad, um, you know, they have the blueprints that are clearly marked that they were catalog homes. And um, we're asking that they bring them along for show and tell. The Mutches themselves will have a number of items on display and as part of their presentation that they will use about the catalog homes. Um, and again, everyone in the community is invited. It's all free. We do serve cookies and coffee and usually lemonade. 
And that's uh, 7 o'clock at the museum next Thursday, the 12th of September. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Eric Clearman, Winifred Street. Had a few items this time. So a question about the Sims crosswalk I brought up last time. I'm a little disappointed that we don't want to do anything with that. I'm not asking that a crosswalk be put in. It's already there. I'm just asking that it be marked properly so it's more safe rather than less safe. Um, there's not another crosswalk anywhere near there, and that's used by a lot of people across Michigan Avenue. The second issue is Wayne Memorial High School has a one-way where you drop the students off or the buses go through. Every day since the school's open this year when I'm dropping my daughter off, there's at least one or two people who come in the exit. There's going to be an accident there. I heard, talked to the school people about it. This, that's the way it's always been done. I understand that, but saying it's the way it's always been done is a real poor excuse for not fixing it. Um, if the school's not willing to do something, I wonder if maybe the police could have a patrol there every now and then to issue a couple tickets. If it's impacting people's pocketbooks, they might not do it so often. Third issue is Michigan Avenue has had the lights out from Barry to Merriman going eastbound and from Merriman to, or Merriman to Gloria westbound for going on three weeks now. I've reported it twice. I don't know what needs to happen before those get turned back on, but we're paying for the lights. It would be nice if they were on. Make it a lot easier to see people there too. Uh, fourth thing is hype. Spoke with them. Both the Michigan and their U.S. flag are pretty tattered. Um, they said they look fine. I don't know if we can do anything to compel them to maybe get new flags there while we're paying them around the community center for us. The thing is the water report, 2015 through 2018, all came out in June. It's September this year. I haven't seen a 2019 water report yet. Wonder when that might be coming out. And my final issue was the senior services. Thank you for selecting me for that. I received an email saying that we wouldn't actually have a meeting yet because not all the positions have been filled. At this point, four positions have been, so I'm wondering how many need to actually be filled before we can have a meeting. Um, with Parks and Trails, we were running with just four people for quite a while, so if we don't want some, or if we don't have some people who want to apply, maybe we should start meeting sooner rather than later. Right now, it's just a position and title. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Sanders. Item two on your council agenda is city council minutes. And the point of having a city council minutes and under that is a subsection of approve. The point of approving it is to read the council agenda or council minutes from the previous um, meeting and to make sure that they're an accurate description of the proceedings that went on. I'm curious to find out why Councilman Wagner uh, voted yes to approve when there's no way that he could possibly have known that they were accurate description when he wasn't at the meeting. That was last meeting. So if I can have an answer next to, next meeting, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Move the agenda. Item number nine is items for next agenda. None. Um, item number 10 is the cons consent calendar, and 10A is Wayne Housing Commission meeting of July 10th, 2019. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And comments from members of City Council? Councilwoman Skiff. Thank you, Mayor. Um, whoa, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so Lisa was talking about the RAP grant, and but she forgot to share the good news. So I will share it for her. Um, so just recently, we received um, uh, it, with the, through the RAP grant um, a reimbursement for the tasers that we bought for our police, the police um, department. So that equals about four, a little over $4,000. The purchase was a little over 8,000. So um, great job to Lisa Nosrini and her strategy group, the Nosrini strategy group for that. Um, thank you very much. And we're so blessed to have you. And um, with that, I'll just close. I just wanted to share the good news and um, that's it. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Councilman Webster. Not that. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I can. Um, so uh, prior to tonight's meeting, uh, we actually had a groundbreaking um, for the uh, upcoming uh, ice cream parlor in the old highlight um, party store. Um, 
so that that was very exciting um, he has a lot of big plans for it he does plan to start um, working on it immediately um, I think he said that he, he's kind of shooting for April of next year to have the business open so um, just kind of drive by there and watch the progress uh, aside from that um, we had a poster card sitting up here when we we got up here today for the Wayne Scarecrow contest um, so here is you know, the timeline of how everything's going to go August 15th to the 21st. Um, you can complete the registration form online or in person and pick up your scare f scarecrow frame from the museum. September 28th is your deadline to turn in the scarecrow. September 30th, Facebook voting begins. And October 16th is the reception that's going to be held at Derby's Alley between 4 and 7. Um, as far as the registration, um, if you use your frame from last year, um, you get a discounted rate of $15, and if you use the one from them, it'll be $20. And um, with that, I will pass. Uh, Councilman Miller. Thank you, Mayor Racine. Um, I just want to remind people that it is back to school, and the most dangerous time for a child to go to school is getting on and off the bus. And law enforcement is uh, is raising the awareness of this. I ask every driver to do the same. Please stop for the, uh, for the flashing lights. Um, roughly around 17,000 children a year are um, either injured or killed in the United States just because of drivers failing to stop. So I ask you to please stop for those flashing lights. Let's, let's keep our children safe going to and from school. Also, um, I want to thank Dan, a resident of this community, who's made an investment on Annapolis for this ice cream parlor. It's great news to hear uh, of this building that's been vacant for quite some time. It's got some historical points to it. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out more about that. Uh, it is scheduled to be opening up next spring, just in time. And uh, so thank you, Dan, uh, for making that investment. Also, um, I want to mention that on Friday, September 13th, between 1 and 2 p.m. at the Hype Center, there's a town hall meeting with Dana Polanke and Senator Dana Nessel, our uh, state attorney general. Uh, great opportunity in our community for these individuals to come and meet the residents uh, with questions and um, informative um, uh, conversation. Also, lastly, um, I want to really thank, you know, it's been a genuine, gracious gift of getting to meet and know a lot of residents in this community over the last few years. And um, there is one resident um, that, though has only been here a few years, uh, has a special place in my heart. And I just want to wish her a happy birthday today. And that is my mother. Uh, she became 92. And um, it's, it's, been a, it's been really a, a blessing in my life at this time to have had her in my life more so than any other time in my life, quite frankly. And so I just want to wish my mom a happy birthday, if I could. Um, with that, um, I will pass. Thank you. Councilman Dowd. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> it was, <laughs> I just want to say it was great, and it's always exciting and rewarding to be part of a groundbreaking event um, and get everybody together from... <clears throat> Uh, certainly from the office and the council. Uh, I, I remember uh, that store, Highlight Store, as being the bread and milk store growing up to kind of date myself, get the bread and milk, bring it home to mom. Uh, that was that was one of my stops. Uh, so to see Highlight uh, coming back into the neighborhood in a, a, a new fashion is fantastic. And uh, a, a big thank you to Dan. I'm going to kill this name. I know I am. Kalinowski and Gina. Uh, uh, we appreciate the investment and the commitment to the city. Uh, secondly, I uh, just want to highlight garbage uh, is on a Tuesday through Saturday schedule this week. It's They're not trying to double up is the way I read it. If I'm accurate in reading it the way I read it, it's just expect it one day later, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. And I just want to lastly say Thank you to our volunteers for the uh, <clears throat> Commission on Aging, uh, specifically uh, Dolores Robb, Phyllis St. Robert, is that right? Uh, Spitzer, or Robert Spitzer, I'm sorry, 
and uh, well, <coughs> missing a name, I think there, Clareman. and also Mr. Clearman. Uh, really, uh, being a volunteer is something that uh, is well understated, but uh, very, very much appreciated. So thank you. Councilman Wagner. Thank you. Um, we're still going through trying times in the city, but we're going to get through it. There's great things happening here. As some have mentioned, uh, the uh, long vacant uh, party store is going to be occupied and hopefully have an opening date uh, this spring. Um, we're getting grant money every chance we can. Um, and uh, we just had a very successful concert in the park season. So we're going through hard times, but we're going to get through them. And uh, I think we're going to be, we're going to come out stronger. We're going to thrive. Thanks. Mayor Pro Tem. I'm going to pass. You've been writing diligently. I sure you have enough to say. I have a few things to say. Um, I, let's, I too want to th uh, thank Dan for uh, uh, opening up, going to be opening up this ice cream place uh, with the groundbreaking. He's a Wayne business owner, lives in the city. Um, I, t I talked about it tonight that uh, these are the kind of individuals that are going to make that make a difference in, in being able to help revitalize their community. And we need more of that happening. Um, uh, just in my in my neighborhood, I know three three different business owners that have businesses in Wayne, and uh, when you have that kind of on uh, th th those types of people, that's that's very important to to the recipe of uh, revitalization. I uh, wanted to mention that uh, at the end of the month, there's going to be a coat drive for veterans. Uh, that's going to have a box here at City Hall. It's possible also there's be a box at the library. They're working out the details right now. Um, but I uh, th thought that was a worthy th uh, cause to make sure our veterans have coats this this winter. Um, and the, and then uh, I wanted to to mention on the concert front. Want to thank all the uh, the volunteers, our DPW, uh, for everything that they they do in helping out with making sure that that happens uh, during the workday. And uh, and Beaumont and uh, Mark Chevrolet and um, the Wayne Rotary. Uh, you can't do it without it, but you know it takes everybody working together. Um, talk to people from all around our area, and they say that our concerts are are off the hook compared to the other communities. And uh, great compliment um, to our community with how things are going with that. And uh, and there's people that travel, go that circuit, and, and pay attention to that kind of stuff. And I'm hearing very, very positive feedback, along with the bands that, that are coming and are very impressed with what we have to offer here in our, our community. They, they want to come to Wayne and play in Wayne, which is uh, very positive, um, a very positive thing. Um, I also wanted to mention a little misinformation that I've seen out there about our senior services program. Um, we have opted to uh, provide our seniors with a way to, uh, to to use other services. And uh, so far, um, we've already got 40 new members at the Friendship Center and it's growing. And I have had very, very positive response from people that I've talked to of seniors that they're very, very happy uh, with uh, the options that they have. Also, there's gonna be some information coming out in the next, within the week of Wayne County Community College is going to be offering classes for seniors uh, 60 and over to go back to school and uh, at, for free um, if there's availability in that class and you have the same requirements as a regular student um, but uh, th that's another really cool thing that that our seniors have the option if they want to learn more about what's going on at the college they can go out and, and get those classes so uh, there's a lot of options for our seniors and uh, um, I think uh, we've made uh, some tough decisions, but uh, I think in the long run, our seniors are, are be provided a service better than what we were able to provide ourselves. And uh, and I've talked to numerous residents that have that have agreed with me on that. So, uh, with that, can I entertain a um, motion to adjourn? Move to approve. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Motion carries.